This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 14, on the 20th of June 2013, an interview with Mixler. This is the DMT One to One Show, and I'm really happy today to welcome Greg Lloyd, the CEO of Mixler. So, hi, Greg, and great to have you on. How's it going? Hey, yeah, good, really good. How are you doing? Very good, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's a warm day, even though it's quite muggy. I think it's going to rain soon. And uh, yes, it's been <laughs> super humid, hasn't it? Yeah, Some definitely. People, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, I want to hear all about Mixler. Uh, I don't think I've had you on the show before. Is that right? Yeah, no, you haven't. I mean, I've been, yeah, I've been waiting for the invite. I don't know, oh God. I don't know what's going on. I'm so on sorry. There, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, uh, I mean, uh, I was going to, I was going to say, let's, let's do an update, but actually we have to start from scratch and yeah. talk about Mixler and how the company has evolved. So tell me all about the company, you know, when did you guys start out and how did the company evolve over time? Yeah, so, I mean, so uh, first things first, so Mixler, obviously we're a platform for live audio. Yeah, um, make it really easy for people to broadcast live audio um, online um, from your iPhone or from your desktop app, um, and that's that's essentially what we do. But on top of that, we've also got we we've got like a social experience on top of that, so that you can see everyone who's listening, interact and engage, and turn like a live audio broadcast into a, an online experience, if you like. Yeah, um, and the whole thing came from myself, and my co-founder Rob. We were at uni a few years back now, so what, five years back, and uh, we were both musicians studying computer science and music, and we wanted a way to be able to broadcast our content live online, and we were just, we, we couldn't believe how hard it was to do, to actually set up live audio streaming. Yeah. Um, so we were both, because we were, we were learning to code at the time, we just went about basically building a, a basic prototype type application, which just did the simple function of just making it really easy to take an audio source and broadcast it live online. That's great. And we put it out there and, and pretty soon we had lots of people using it and we realized that it was a, it was a bigger, bigger issue than, than when we first, what we first thought. And pretty soon we had all kinds of interesting use cases. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so how do you go about developing the product? Because I know that... Uh, you know, uh, as you find these use cases and your load increases, then you have to think about the audience, think about the creators. And so uh, what were the, the main, I guess, milestones and issues that you managed to solve or with Mixler through time that, that you found were most challenging for you? Yeah, I think, you know, technologically, it's, it's doing live is, is actually quite, quite difficult yeah. to do. Um, but once we got over that first hurdle of actually figuring out how we could do it, we... Um, Really, like we listen to our users a lot. Um, we talk to them all the time, um, and you know, we we were building it for ourselves. It was yeah. it was for our own use case. So as we were using it ourselves, we we, we kind of knew the the, the features we wanted, um, and we've always been in in good in touch with our users and been listening to their feedback and making sure we implement what they need. Um, and because myself and Rob were both coders, um, we were able to move quickly and build things very quickly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's how we've approached it from the start, and that's how we're still approaching it. We just build things quick, put it out there, test them, get feedback, kind of MVP, iterative development the whole time. So yeah. that's, that's how we've approached it from the start. Sure, and uh, looking at the different platforms that you that you broadcast on, so uh, uh, you have uh, iPhone app. So when yeah. did that come about, and how? Or what's the uptake on that? Yeah, so the iPhone app um, was a, was a big step for us actually. Um, that came, we released that at the end of December, right? And I think from a, from a consumption point of view, it, it's huge because people. People love listening on their the devices now, so um, and, and it's really good for us to be able to push updates to the retention on, on iPhone um, apps is, is much higher and, and really good. So from a, from a um, consumption point of view, it's really good for listeners. Um, but additionally, I think these things are phenomenal for as a broadcast tool. Yeah, I mean, some of the use cases we're getting of people broadcasting via their their phone is is great whether it's you know football um podcast people that the fans in the pub after the match just putting their phone on the table and just broadcasting a, their their podcast live from the pub straight after the football match yeah. um it just wasn't possible before so this from a, from a um production point of view 
and uh, from a broadcasting point of view, this is this is going to be really big for us, I think, going forward. But yeah, um, yeah and it's, it's it's been going really well ever since we launched it. That's great. And uh, so talking about. Uh you know, the different use cases, of course, mobile is it's a very interesting for you, especially because it's audio only, because I know that uh, I spoke to the guys at live stream a couple of months ago, and they are still having issues with uh, uh, bandwidth, of course, and stuff like that yeah. when it comes to doing live streaming of, of audio uh, or, or video of any kind, yeah. uh, whilst audio is a little bit more manageable, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think from a listening consumption point of view, um, the bandwidth overheads are a lot less, um, yeah. about one fifth of the, the size. and. Exactly. Uh, and the same when we're broadcasting, um, you just can't do live video really over um, 3G. It's just not really possible. So, um, so until yeah, 4G comes up, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that that's, that works well. And plus, um, the production overheads. I mean, video is really mature. Really, it's surprising if you look at as a technology. Um, videos really very mature compared to audio. Audio is just yeah. really starting to take off, and I think the introduction of or the growth in mobile has really helped with that because you know the real estate you get on your phone is is so so small um if you want to watch a video you can't do anything else you, know, you have to just consume that video but with audio you can you can play with other apps plus you can actually socialize and interact yeah. around the around the audio um so I, I think it's sound and audio is really just starting to to take off um, yeah. and the possibility we're only now starting to see the possibilities of where it could go and talking Sweet. about your relationship with uh, SoundCloud for example you know it's a service that of course it's the first service service that comes to mind when you think about a platform like Mixler you know yeah. as, 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 a, as a very uh, intuitive tie-up so so how do you work with those guys well I mean you know, we, we've always had a good relationship with those guys always respected what they've done I mean I remember Myself and Rob, we, we won the first uh, Music Hack Day SoundCloud competition and right. like back in the day before Mixler. And we went out to Berlin and spent some time with those, those guys and we've been chatting to them ever since. They're, they're, they're a great company. And I think um, it, it made sense for us at the beginning to so for example, when you broadcast via Mixler, once your show's done, you can one click export it to SoundCloud. Right. You can also export it to Mixcloud and, and Dropbox and various other services. But um, that was one of the first features we built bought, um, built because it, it just makes sense. They've got such a great community of, of uh, content creators on there. And um, yeah, it, but the, the relationship is, you know, it's not, there's nothing formal there. It's just we, we think they've got a great product, great API, exactly. and we just, yeah. we just make good use of it. Yeah, sure. And talking about uh, users, uh, do you have any milestones that you can you can talk about uh, in terms of the usage of Mixler? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we recently, so last month, we reached over a million users, wow. which is um, a huge. really good milestone for us. Um, and yeah, we're really, really proud of that. And considering we've only really just started to to um, to bring get the product to where we want it to be, we've got lots to lots to come, and and uh, we've only started to scratch the surface of what's possible. Yeah, and going back to the uh, product side, uh, there's a, uh, also a desktop app for the Mac. Uh, so this is yeah. called Mixler Basic. Uh, yeah. uh, do I understand that it's still a beta product? Um, so yeah, we've got we're, the desktop app at the moment is uh, in a in a it's it's a beta it's a, in beta at the moment. Um, again, we had an initial version out, and um, there were there were a few uh, bugs with it, and so we we kind of listened to our users wanted to find out what sound, cloud, sound cards they, they used and what equipment and how they wanted to broadcast. And we yeah. just kind of stripped it all down and just, just gone back to basics with it. Yeah. Um, and the, the, the reaction has been, it's been really good. And, and now we're able to expand our team. We've got someone working full time on that. So it's really going to start. We're going to add a lot of features to that. That is the foundation of, of what we do, yeah. um, that broadcasting app. Is is where we add value for broadcasters. So yeah. that's really where our focus is going forward. Yeah, and it looks like a very nimble app as well. So it's something that you could probably be run alongside other applications without impacting too much the yeah the workload of a computer, which is a really big problem for most people. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's um, compatible on on Windows and as well as um, Mac as well. So um, yeah. but there's we're, we're kind of just rolling out features. MVP. The, the, the trouble you normally have with um, Desktop applications is it's hard to to update quickly yeah. and move quickly with them. Um, so we kind of don't want to do yeah we want to be able to change things quickly with it. So um, 
we're making sure that that's possible and, and that's why we kind of call it the beta app at the moment that's great so that and we can add add new features quickly of course and looking at uh, music music versus talk uh, so that's something that all the services that are dealing with uh, uh, with audio uh, and video i guess the uh, broadcasting and consumption are, are having to deal with at the moment so uh, uh, what, what is your ratio and do you have more musicians using it more talk people using it yeah i mean we we, we have we have such a mixture really it's um it's such a wide i mean everyone from community radio stations in rwanda using us as their main technology to, to actually broadcast to, the, to their local community all the way to um during the thai floods a couple of years ago we were one of the main sources for people to get updates on um on what was going on yeah. in terms of road closures etc because no one had electricity but everyone had phones and that was the only way they could actually get the updates so th these they, those were use cases we had no intention. We, we didn't build that thinking that something we were building in my bedroom was, was going to have such an impact. Yeah. Um, so we, we've had that aspect. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we've had like the sports um, podcasts and talk shows is, is, are obviously quite big. But then on the other side of music, we're, we're starting to see some really interesting use cases there. I think um, streaming of live events, um, it's only just, only really just beginning to be a real demand for this. Um, and one thing we're seeing is that there's, you know, the production overheads for doing video well are really, it's really high. You know, you need a budget, you need a few few thousand pounds or whatever to, to actually be able to stream a, a good quality live video. Yeah. But with audio, you can literally just take a feed out of the mixing desk, That's right. put it into your, um, into our desktop app, and you're broadcasting high quality audio, um, so so people are. That's that's a really interesting use case. And we've had some um, guys like Widespread Panic, who are quite a big band in America. Yeah. They're using us to do their whole street, um, their whole tour at the moment. Right. Um, instead of just reaching a few thousand people in the stadium, they're they're, they're able to reach hundreds of thousands of people online, which is really really good for them. So that's one place we really see it being of use for to musicians um and another one is album previews so um people being able to like throw listening parties for their for their albums great, yeah. um and we've had a few good use cases of that like what records and all second did did a really interesting um pre uh, yeah album party show um yeah. which was which was a huge success so um th those are kind of the two two areas where i see them being being really useful for for musicians yeah and uh, and uh, it's interesting to think also of, of uh, levels of gating have you guys thought about uh, any types of gatings for the broadcasts in, in the sense that for example a musician could add this uh, uh, to one of the pledge perks or to the kickstarter per perks of, of their campaigns yeah i mean that, that's a really that's a really good um idea um that's something we are we are looking at um anything we can add value for the for artists and, and the content creators and, and broadcasters is, is so, definitely something we consider um but I think primarily our focus is just still to make it as easy as possible. We, 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 we've only scratched the surface with making it easy. Um, yeah. And we, we've got a hell of a long way to go to make it just drop dead simple. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. so, so that's that's the main focus at the moment. But yeah, I can imagine yeah, Kickstarter stuff, um, pledging, pledge music stuff for, for live shows would be would be awesome pretty interesting yeah exactly uh, cool well and uh, finally talking about uh, sort of uh, uh, monetization which is always uh, the last yeah. thing but i guess it's pretty important for, for yeah, any company that interviews so uh, yeah. you guys have a freemium model so it's, it's a free tier and a pay tier it's quite simple isn't it yeah super simple um and you know nine nine ninety nine nine a month you, you just are able to stream at a higher quality and uh it's amazing you know if you if you, if you build a product that adds value um yeah, people will pay for it. Yeah, you know it's 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 as simple as that. And you, if you actually charge, so uh, so we, we we're finding it's going really well. Similar to how SoundCloud have monetized as well. Yeah. We just want to make build as much value for the broadcasters and and uh, charge for it. That's great. That's great. And so they're certainly going in a different direction than some of the other audio yeah. uh, services that are, for example, integrating radio stations or, or doing stuff like that, where there's a, a advertising having component that can be can be a nuisance at times. So, yeah. so it's interesting to see to see this model as well uh, working out yeah. for you guys.
Yeah, cool. Okay. So, well, yeah. awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And, right, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, it's uh, Mixler.com. Go and check out the website. Or if you are on iPhone, uh, just search for Mixler on the App Store and uh, download it. It's super easy to uh, do your own broadcast in literally like uh, five seconds. It's, uh, it, it, I don't think it takes more than 30 seconds to actually uh, log nice. in and get up and running. So uh, it's pretty cool. It's great. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Thanks. Have a good Take day. care. If you enjoyed the show, remember to check out our weekly music tech news show on digitalmusictrends.com.